Okay, next up on the list, and it's this is the second team that we've done so far, is the Chicago White Sox. Very, very bad team. Just get that out of the way. This is a very, very bad baseball team that has some long-term hope, I think, because uh, I think they're going about the rebuild the right way. But in the short term, you're going to see some bad baseball on that side of Chicago. It's just the way it is. And you saw some awfully bad baseball on that side of Chicago in 2023. So the team that won 61 and 101, amazingly, 61 and 101, a lot of times you're talking about first overall pick or second overall pick. Well, with the lottery, that changes things. But 61 and 101, not only was it not the worst record in the American League, it wasn't even the worst record in the division because the Royals were that bad at 56 and 106. Now, I think the Royals are a much better team than the White Sox on paper to begin 2024. We'll see how it goes. And we'll talk about the Royals when we get to them, I promise. But on paper, this White Sox team, oh, this is going to be a long, long season for them. And they made a lot of roster moves. Tim Anderson is gone. Uh, they moved a bunch. Of, well, they actually moved a bunch of their rotation actually at the trade deadline last year because Michael Kopeck. Well, Michael Kopeck's still there. I'm sorry about that. Lucas Giolito is gone. Lance Lynn is gone. Mike Clevenger has not signed with anybody. Be curious to see how much real interest there is in a player like that. All of their big bullpen arms are gone. Kendall Graveman is gone. Gregory Santos is gone. Aaron Bummer is gone. Reynaldo Lopez is gone. Keenan Middleton is gone. That's literally those big five gone all of them either in trades one of them with the seattle mariners as maybe everybody knows uh, gregory santos is now a member of the mariners bullpen but it's a lot of stuff gone and the replacements aren't exactly this is not a playoff contender but there is some reason for optimism i think the biggest reason for optimism is luis robert Still a guy who will turn 27 this year. It seems like Luis Robert has been playing Major League Baseball forever. But still tapping into his potential. Luis Robert is a star. 38 homers last year with 20 stolen bases. There's a lot of inconsistency. That's true for a lot of players that age. At his best, Luis Robert, to me, looks like a future top dozen baseball player. And it wouldn't shock me if you reached that level this year. Now, I also said that last year and the year before that. He hasn't quite gotten there yet. Not far behind. But I think he can get there. I also think this outfield isn't terrible. Partially because you have Luis Robert. But then you have, I loved the trade for Dominic Fletcher. I don't think Dominic Fletcher is a star. But I think Dominic Fletcher is going to be a solid starting outfielder for a long time. And then Andrew Benintendi, who that contract doesn't look great by baseball standards. The Chicago White Sox are going to be just fine. We talked a lot about the money stuff. He's fine. He's fine. It's not a star in an ideal world, probably playing for a different baseball team, I think, for the Chicago White Sox. But he's fine. And then Eloy Jimenez. I just believe in that bat so much. And I think it's worth pointing out, too, that Eloy Jimenez just turned 27 at the end of April, too. He seems like he's older than that because he's been around for so long, and he's definitely had health issues. But when he's been healthy, he has been an offensive stalwart. There's still a lot to like about that bat. He's someone I kind of wanted the Mariners to pursue, but as a DH, and once they made the Mitch Garver signing, that wasn't going to happen. I don't want Eloy Jimenez to ever play in the outfield again. For his sake and for his team's sake. It's just not a great idea. Andrew Vaughn has not shown a whole heck of a lot of consistency. But he's a player who just turned 26. In fact, he hasn't even turned 26 yet. He will at the start of April. I've seen enough flashes of brilliance to believe that he could be a solid offensive player for a long time. Maybe not a star. It's interesting looking at the division. There's some really intriguing, but flawed. Flawed may not even be the right word, but questionable. I don't know. Yeah, flawed, questionable, same word. Andrew Vaughn and Spencer Torkelson and Vinny Pasquantino all have a lot of offensive upside. And we've seen Vaughn tap into it, I think, on the most consistent of basis. 
So I still believe in his bat. The rest of this offense looks dreadful. We'll talk about it in a second. You take a look at the rotation. You've got Dylan Cease at the top of it. That's not such a bad thing. Now, look, Dylan Cease was not great last year. ERA above 4.5, really struggled with walks. My biggest concern with Cease since he was drafted by the Cubs has been, is he going to throw enough quality strikes to remain a quality starter? Last year, he didn't. Quality being a subjective term, he certainly wasn't horrible, but compared to his 2022, where he looked like he was on his way to becoming one of the better starters in baseball, didn't live up to that hype. Didn't really come close to that. I'm betting on a bounce back year, and I'm also betting that that bounce back year leads to cease playing for somebody else by the end of 2024. From the people I talk to, it sounds like cease is readily available, but you're going to have to give up a haul. Like they made a lot of trades, and a lot of them were about volume, more about quantity than I think quality, if I'm being. 100 honest with you and that ain't going to be with cease you're going to have to give up quantity and quality it's going to take a massive haul to get him right now and i get it there's no reason that the white Sox have to trade dylan cease now here's the thing if he has the same year that he did last year you're not getting anywhere close to what you can get right now Right now, so if we are talking about Dylan Cease's value being 100%, right? The end of 2022 was when Dylan Cease's value was the most. Right now, you're probably talking about 75% or 75 cents on the dollar if you want to do it that way. If he has the same year this year by the deadline or at the end of it or whatever, you're talking about 40 cents on the dollar. That's a risk, especially with a pitcher, and especially a pitcher who is going to turn 29 at the end of the year. But I get taking that risk. I get taking that risk for a pitcher who was a Cy Young candidate throughout the year. The rest of the rotation, I'll just give you what MLB.com has as the projected rotation right now. You got Michael Kopech, Mike Soroka, Eric Fetty, Chris Flexen, and then you have Garrett Crochet and Jared Schuster also competing. Not great. Talented. Michael Kopech has had his share of flashes of brilliance. But boy, of command issues also hurt him. And ability to stay on the mound. Michael Soroka, three years ago, looked like he was a potential ace. Has not been able to stay healthy. Didn't look great when he was on the mound in 2023. Eric Fetty, really interesting, former first-round pick, goes overseas, pitches really well, gets a two-year deal. Curious to see how well that works because we have seen cases where it's worked really well. And we've seen cases where it hasn't worked so well. If I'm being honest with you, I'm betting on the latter. I just don't think Fetty's much more than a fourth or fifth starter. Now, nah, he's lined up to be a fourth or fifth starter, so they'll take that, and he has a perfectly reasonable contract. Again, the money thing, yada, yada, yada. Chris Lexon. Mariner fans know him well. Uh, good luck. Garrett Crochet is really interesting to me. And he looked, I have some recency bias here. Watched him pitch in that spring training game today. Looked fantastic. And there's never been a question about this guy's stuff. I have my doubts about it really working as a starter. I think he is a high leverage reliever. But give it a shot. Give it a shot knowing that you can move him into that bullpen spot if it doesn't jared schuster I, I just don't see it i don't see it now the bullpen huh we talked about the rockies have the worst rotation in baseball i think on paper this is the worst bullpen in baseball right now i have no idea who's going to close games for them you've got tanner banks sammy peralta lane ramsey jimmy lambert tim hill john brebbia brebbia may be the favorite to close games for them Debbie Garcia, who was an intriguing prospect at one point. Tuki Toussaint, who also an intriguing guy at one point. Brian Shaw, who I think has pitched in the major league since 1988. Congratulations on your uh, 36th major league season. And then Shane Drohan as well, a little bit of a younger arm. Bad. Really bad. And 
I will point this out. Makes me wonder if Prelander Barroa with a good spring training can make this team. I'm still a big fan of Barroa stuff. Big, big fan. Command? <laughs> but you look at these names above, it ain't hard for me to see him being a guy at all for the Chicago White Sox team. At catcher, Martin Maldonado. It's going to be weird seeing him in anything but a Houston uniform. We also have Max Stassi and Corey Lee at catcher. It's the all former Astro team. Really rooting for Max Stassi. Uh, 2023 was a really tough year for him. He didn't get to play because of an injury and also because of a family personal thing. Go get him. Go get him. Uh, we talked about first base. Second base, Nicky Lopez coming over from Kansas City. I think he's a solid player, but I would prefer him in a utility role. Yuan Mankata is a guy that, <laughs> as a prospect guy, this is <laughs> the pain of my existence may seem too strong, but he, he's the type of guy that people point to and they go, you see, you see prospects aren't any good. Prospects fail. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Just has not lived up to the hype. You know, I, a guy, again, I would love to have as my utility guy. Don't want him as my starting third baseman. And same true for shortstop. Paul DeYoung or DeJong. Not great. Not great at all. Let's be honest. Paul DeJong is holding a roster spot for Colson Montgomery. There's a reason to be excited. Colson Montgomery might be a top five prospect. I think he's closer to seven or eight, but not uh, darting with faint praise there whatsoever. One of the higher floors. And then, you know, we talk about prospects and floors that we just talked about, you know, on Moncada. But I think he's going to hit for average. I think he's going to hit for power. And I think he's going to be a very solid defensive player. There's a lot to like there. And it wouldn't shock me with a good showing in the upper levels if Montgomery is up sometime around the all-star break. He's ready. I mean, he's got the position. Oh, uh, what the heck? Words are hard. He is got the prime position to be ready. Whether he's ready or not, I think will be determined by how he looks a little bit this spring and a lot by how he looks in the minor leagues. No edit button, folks. No edit button. Uh, I do believe in Colson Montgomery quite a bit. Uh, you're... Chances of making the postseason here are pretty slim, Chicago. If if something was to do go right, it would take Cease, Kopech, and Soroka all reaching their top potential. And let me give you one other reason for optimism real quick. This division stinks. The fact that the Royals can win this division kind of tells you how bad it is. Like, it's awful. There's your glimmer of hope. Maybe everybody plays down to you, Chicago. But you would it would take Cease, Kopech, and Soroka all pitching at their top of their abilities. Jimenez staying healthy and putting together his best season. Luis Roba Robert, I always want to call him Robert. Luis Robert living up to his absolute potential. And then like a breakout season from someone like Moncada or maybe Montgomery. Maybe. But they're, that bullpen just stinks on ice. There's so many question marks about the rotation. There's so many question marks about whether or not this team can stay healthy. Take, take what Seattle's roster is and their health concerns and then lower the talent by 30%. That's not ideal. Not exactly the formula, I think, for winning a whole heck of a lot of baseball games. So to answer the question, are the Mariners better than the White Sox? Yes, convincingly 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 what do you think can the white Sox surprise is this division bad enough that they can maybe you know hang on definitely bet the under on whatever the under is again i didn't look any of that stuff up they're just not very good they're not very good and i don't think they're going to be very good for a while especially if they make some of the trades that i think they might tell me what you think hit like and subscribe pretty pretty please and we'll be back tomorrow with another really bad baseball team.